Meet Kazu. He's a Japanese polyglot who speaks countless languages. Na samanzile ya znae o ruski toje. Hoito mish. Ifin dragon tsubanzi. Tora tora to tora to buta. Bogu marokan parlon très bien français. Enti tatakan nami lugata arabi ro fuska. Kana aku pengen ngo monbare mona Indonesia. Donde vive sem chide. Avore in parlare l'italiano. Today I will be asking him how he learns languages and about the common mistakes people often make when they try to learn new ones. Okay, let's get started. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for having me. Uh, could you introduce your background? For sure. Uh, my name is Kazuma. I'm 23 years old and living in Japan. I'm learning currently 12 languages and also I'm learning like other languages in my spare time. Okay, so what language do you speak? Oh, I speak English, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Indonesian, Arabic, Turkish, Russian, German, Chinese, hmm? Thai, and right now I'm learning Korean. Could you introduce yourself in the languages you speak? Like very briefly, briefly. Ah, okay. Yeah. Bueno, hablo español porque, bueno, viví en España antes. Y, ouais, je suis pas en français aussi parce que c'était la première langue que j'ai appris tout seul. Parle portugais también porque gosto mucho de Brasil, né? Aku bisa bahasa Indonesia juga karena aku pengen ngomong para orang Indonesia. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ana ta'alam luka ta'abiyya li ani ana uri dan alif an adinia islamia yani amel havalal benigadon kazuma ben tujja uren yorum chunku chukrale konishima kishiorum ich spreche auch deutsch weil ich mit deutschen sprechen möchte da ja gabario paluski toje i eta moi lubi mu yuzek tsuna samanjiele da wo hoshi wo i dian dian jongwen iwei wo wo do jongo wenfu a ganshin chu anyohaseyo jigum hangumar kombo heyo tengo gakushu ga daisuki de First of all, like when and how did you get interested in learning Japanese, learning the language? Well, I started learning languages when I was 18, so five years ago, more or less. Yeah, I started with Spanish because I used to live in Spain for half a year. Although we learned English at school, Spanish was the first language that I you know, intensively, like actively learned. Yeah, after coming back to Japan, I started learning other various languages like French, Portuguese, and that's how my language journey started. What brought you to Spain? Like, did you go there for work or for studying oh, abroad? I studied abroad in Spain. Why did you decide to go to Spain? Because I think many Japanese people who go and study abroad, they mainly go to English speaking countries right. like Australia, America, or Canada, right? right? But why was it Spain? Uh, because at that time, like, the Spanish music was getting viral, you know. I like to, you know, listen to foreign music, so I got interested in the lyrics, what, what they are saying. So, yeah, I basically decided to learn Spanish. And I, I didn't like English that much because, you know, English we learned at school for a long time. And it's like, to like studying, I had a like strong impression of studying, so I wanted to try a different language your second language english and spanish right yeah. and after that like how did you you know become fluent in other languages after coming back to japan oh i think at first my language learning was a bit like challenging i didn't know how to study and um, i bought some like grammar books vocab books but i didn't feel like i improved it so I decided to learn languages in a more practical way. As for listening, I tried to get the main idea because it's almost impossible to understand every single word that native speakers are saying because they speak pretty fast sometimes and it's so difficult. So I tried to understand the main idea. I try practicing these kind of things. As for speaking, I try to imitate the sound of native speakers a lot. At first it's challenging, but um, if I practice these kind of things, my pronunciation got better. I think it's difficult to fix your pronunciation afterwards. It's better to get a proper pronunciation at first. Basically, I focused on the pronunciation, listening the main idea. What language was the most difficult to learn? Oh, man, definitely Russian and Arabic was the by far the hardest 
And my favorite languages are also Russian and Arabic. Like, can you explain why it's difficult to learn those languages? Uh, because it's totally different from ours, our language. I mean, Japanese language. Japanese, okay. Yeah, in terms of the pronunciation, the grammar, and everything. Yeah, it was very hard to learn it, but culture, the way they live is also completely different from ours. So I got interested in, you know, I feel exotic when I learn these languages. So I fell in love with these languages. Like, I think Arabic is like, you, you need to read sentences from right, right, yeah, not opposite. left, which is completely opposite of Japanese. I was so shocked. <laughs> yeah, I was so shocked. When I did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so is it different the way you learn? Depends on the language you learn? Depends on the language you targeting? Or do you think it's always the same? Yeah, basically the same, but some languages are pretty, pretty different from Japanese, but some languages are similar to Japanese. If the grammar is similar, I don't have to focus that much. What language, what languages are similar to Japanese language? Um, right now, based on my experience, Korean, Turkish, and Hindi are similar. Really? Hindi, Hindi. and Turkish? Yeah. How similar is it? Like, in terms of like grammar, especially the word order. Basically in English and other languages, it's like subject, verb, and object. But in Japanese and Korean and Turkish, subject, object, and verb, these kind of things. What about when it comes to pronunciation? What language is similar Pronunci to Japanese sound? Pronunciation is, yeah, Turkish is similar, I think. Also like Spanish, because we have five vowels, a, i, u, e, o, but Spanish as well. So it's easy to pronounce it. I interviewed so many Spanish speakers mm -hmm. who speak Japanese as well, and their pronunciation is better than, you know, the people I interviewed mm -hmm. from like, you know, English speaking countries mm -hmm. or, you know, like other countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it does make sense. As a polyglot, as someone who acquired many languages, uh, what did you learn from those experiences? At first, when I was in Spain, I mean, Spain is a tourist country, right? So there are so many tourists. And yeah, it's one of the most visited countries in the world. Yeah, Spanish people think that tourists speak English. English is the international language. But when I talk to them in Spanish, their face facial expression will be like, wow, you, sp you speak Spanish. Like, it's so heartwarming. Their reactions were priceless. At that moment, I realized that language connects people. Language is not just a tool, but also like respect towards their culture, their people. I love the famous quote of Nelson Mandela from the South Africa that says, if you speak languages that they understand, it goes to their brain. But if you speak their native language, it goes to their heart. Native language has a special power, I think. So that's why I decided to learn so many languages. That's something I would never experience, mm -hmm. even though I speak English, mm -hmm. even though I'm bilingual, but people assume me to speak English, mm -hmm. even though I'm Japanese. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh. More than 90% of Japanese people don't speak English. Yeah, it's interesting to see those experiences because I would never get that mm -hmm. one, you know, and now, at, at the moment. Maybe I'm gonna learn new languages, but yeah. <laughs> yeah As you acquire the new languages, does it get easier? to learn new languages or it's still same do you think it's e it gets easier yeah i think the more languages that you learn the easier you get because some languages are quite similar for example like spanish portuguese french uh, italian are similar and russian polish ukrainian are similar and also you can get to know how language works like how the grammar works how, how to pronounce this kind of things. I think you can improve your listening skills, yeah, pronunciation skills as time goes by. Have you ever dreamed of learning new languages or improve your language skill? I've got some exciting news from Lingoda. Online language school that changed the way we learn languages. Lingoda offers flexible live classes available 24 seven. So you can learn at your own place and on your schedule. Each lesson is 60 minutes of immersed learning with a native level teacher, ensuring you get attention and a practice that you need. Lingoda has classes in German, English, Spanish, French, and business English. The 
that will soothe your level and then help you progress. Choose a class that matches your level. And let's talk about Lingoda Sprint Challenge. It's a fun, intense way to boost your language learning. Complete 50 lessons in 30 days and get 50% cashback or 15 credits or take on the super sprint by completing 30 lessons in 30 days more than 47,000 people have already accepted the lingo the challenge making significant strides in their language learning i'm learning english with lingo da. i personally like these small classes because you don't need to hesitate to ask something and now it's your turn this is an amazing opportunity for beginners, those who need a structured boost, or anyone wanting to advance quickly. With Lingoda, you get personalized feedback and a live speaking practice that's both effective and affordable. As a member of my community, you get special discount. Use the code Takashi for 20 euro or 25 USD off your first payment. Just click in the description and discount will be applied to your Lingoda account. Don't miss out this chance to transform your language skills and start your journey with Lingoda today. See you in class. Japanese people's second language skill, mainly English, of course. Uh, why Japanese people don't really speak English, even though we learn English for 10 years at school? 10 years, right. You know. Yeah. What's your opinion? Yeah. Well, I think we focus too much on reading and grammar. Yeah, but I, I, I would like to say that English language is completely different from ours, Japanese language, in terms of grammar and pronunciation and everything. So it's difficult to learn for Japanese people. So English is a difficult language for us. It's vice versa because for English speakers, Japanese is one of the most difficult languages in the world in, 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 for them. In order to improve our English, I think we have to like get rid of the fear of speaking that language. We are afraid of speaking English, you know, because Speaking skills are developed only by speaking. It's like sports, you know, you have to try, you have to try and make mistakes and you have to practice it a lot. So yeah, basically you have to talk with native speakers and I think gradually it gets better. Yeah. I think it's changing a little bit. It has to do with education system, but also Japanese people's mentality, like personalities as well. Yeah, personality. Yeah, right. You cannot be shy when you learn the language, basically. Oh. You can be shy, but <laughs> I don't know, like, I think the confidence is very important when you speak the language. When I lose confidence in pronunciation and speaking, my speaking skills got much worse. But when I have like confidence, like I feel like I can speak it, I speak much better. So I think confidence is more very important. Like at first, did you feel that fear? Afraid of making mistakes yeah. and, you know, being judged and everything? Did you feel that? That's yeah, I was, I was. How did you, how did you overcome? How did you overcome? Um, well, by speaking a lot, I think. Basically, it's, it's, it's a matter of like practice. You can get used to it, definitely. Everyone can, yeah, do it. I understand you speak English, Spanish, Japanese, because you lived in Spain, <laughs> right? But I don't get how did you get fluent in Arabic or Russian because you never lived there, right? Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. how did you how did you learn the language? Maybe at home or maybe how did you learn the language without native speakers? Mm. Yeah. Well, actually not, not fluent yet. I'm still learning it. But um, yeah, I, basically I learned languages at home in the past few years. I dedicated so much time on it. I haven't been traveling a lot in the past few years and I study, study, study. If you like it, you can keep going. But um, I use textbooks. So you actually study? You actually study as well? Yeah, 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 yeah. In front of the desk. And also, like, I watched a lot of series and movies in that language. So, and you also find native speakers online. Yeah. Right, right. When you just start learning new languages, how do you start from the level that you don't even know how to say hello? The most common phrases, for example, like, why W1H, like, why, how, noun adjective like beautiful nice like this kind of things and if you combine these common words you can make thousands of thousands of sentences so that's how language works so at the beginning level you can improve faster but when you get to like an advanced level it becomes so difficult any advice to all the people including me who are learning the language oh, right now you you don't have to be perfect you know because Native speakers are 
nicer than you expected. If you speak their language, they will be become happy. The remembering just one or two phrases makes difference. So you don't have to like force yourself to be perfect. And you can make tons of mix mistakes. As you can see, I make tons of mistakes when I speak English and other languages as well. You don't have to worry about making mistakes. Any language that you want to learn next time? Yeah, I want to learn... Um, well, right now I'm learning Korean. But after that, I want to learn Tagalog because there are a lot of Filipinos in Japan and I want to communicate with them. Also, um, I want to try Swahili language because I've never tried African languages in the past. And I, I try languages from like Europe, American continent, Asia and everywhere but not Africa yet. So yeah, I want to try Swahili as well. Any, any country you want to visit next time as well? Well, I mean... A lot. <laughs> I mean, um, I wanna, I wanna explore every country. You know, especially, especially, or oh, Brazil. I think. Have you been to Latin America? Not yet. Not yet. Not not American continent yet. I I've never been to um, U.S. I mean, English speaking countries. Oh, because of the pandemic, maybe you could, but now you can have opportunities. Right? right. Right. Yeah. But right now, I think I would like to improve my languages that I've already acquired and I want to try new languages as well. So for now, I don't know, but yeah, I would like to explore many countries in the future. Do you think there are any negative aspects of living in the country, let's say living in Japan, when you want to learn Japanese? Well, I think living in that country doesn't mean that you will get to speak that language. For example, I'm Japanese and I, if I go to the um, US to study English, if I'm surrounded by Japanese people, I hang out with Japanese people and it will be difficult to improve your English. So if you want to live in that country, it's better to go alone and not like surrounded by well, Japanese people in that case. I went to Tarragona in, in Spain and there were no Japanese people in the city. That's why I decided to go there. Yeah, it's better to go alone. Well, I think it's a bit challenging, but... You basically lived Spain, that's it. Only Spain. Do you have any ex other experience of living abroad? No, only Spain. When I was in Spain, I have been to other, you know, neighboring countries like France, Italy, and these countries. How many countries have you visited in total? I think 10. 10? Think, yeah. Out of all the countries, where is your favorite? Well... It's difficult to choose one because I like all the countries that I visited, but I especially loved Spain, um, Morocco, and Turkey. Turkey. Why did you like those countries? Yeah, like As specifically. Um, well, in Spain, of course, I have so many memories there, so I feel nostalgic. And also, like in in Turkey, the people are so nice, and uh, their hospitality is amazing. The food is amazing, the culture is amazing. So yeah, I basically fell in love with Turkey. And in Morocco, I went to the Sahara Desert. Yeah, that was one of the best experiences that I ever had in my life. I think not many Japanese people go to mm -hmm. North Africa or you know Arab countries, mm -hmm. right? I think Arab countries are so far from Japan right. or Japanese people. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, we see Western media, you know, we know Latin culture because so many Brazilians live here and everything. But like Arab countries, are, it's interesting that you, you speak Arabic as well. Right. When I was in Morocco, I heard Azan. Azan, it's like Islamic, how do you say, prayer call, so to, so to speak. I thought it was so beautiful. I also experienced the Muslim hospitality. So I became interested in Islamic religion and, you know, the Arabic language. That's why I tried to learn it. Okay, so as someone who been to many countries, who speaks many languages, like how do you see Japan as a country? You know, you I think from your perspective, you can see Japan's good points and bad points at the same time, right? Like how do you see Japan? Well, I basically love Japan so much. I really love the diversity in Japan. For example, like in Hokkaido, it snows a lot and it's so beautiful in winter but like in okinawa it's like a tropical island and you know it's like southern eastern asian countries tokyo is it's a megapolitan city it's there are a lot of like skyscrapers 
and all of that. So like landscape is completely different depending on the region. And also I really love the food. It's amazing. When I was in Spain, I missed Japanese food so much. And it's also cheap. Safe. Safety is very essential in Japan. Like you can go out at midnight. You know, it's super organized. You don't have to be worried about. Yeah, I really love Japan. Except the earthquake, <laughs> I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah. Right, that's true. Yeah. Maybe that's why not many people go abroad for traveling, mm. you know, Japanese people, you know, because we don't need to travel because we, we have everything, maybe. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. In general, as a Japanese person, is there any advice to those who come into Japan to live here, to live, to here? live here? Well, I think it's sometimes difficult for foreign people to live in Japan because most of us don't speak English. But yeah, I think right now the situation is getting better. More people go abroad and, you know, learn the different culture, diversity. Yeah, right now I think it's changing and there are a lot of like English resources on YouTube and bookstore and everything. It's getting easier for foreign people to live in Japan right now. We always welcome and I would like to say that the customer service in Japan is absolutely incredible. It's exceptional, I think. So, yeah. Where do you recommend? Where? For tourists to visit in Japan, oh. yeah. Where in Japan do you recommend? I think Kyoto is, you can feel a traditional atmosphere. From Kyoto, you can go to Osaka as well because it's pretty close. Osaka is, you know, on the contrary, it's so vibrant and the people are so friendly and yeah you can really enjoy living there especially if you're from i don't know european countries i think at the end can you say something to those who learn in languages in the languages you speak all right bueno si te gusta un país determinado te mojes budget rubo yuzuk uh if you see idea the obstacle don't long on term in the to so must você pode esperar se gosta né sabe Es ist eigentlich eine schöne Erfahrung und äh, innerhalb von der Jamila lebt alle auf der Kappa auch da. Sie sind in Chancellor Dillerim, weil es man geht. Many people think that they can't learn a language, but dono Gengo ga manabe nai to motte ru dake de, dare mo ga Gengo o manabe ru to mo no de, ganbatte kudasai. Okay, thank you so much um, for talking with me. Um, we learned a lot about learning language. If you're watching this video, you can check his channel. It's absolutely incredible. You can learn. You can see the beauty of learning languages. And yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Well, yeah, I, I try to communicate with people from all, all around the world. And I'm still learning, you know, different languages. So if you are interested in like language learning, getting to know, you know, other culture, please check my channel as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having me.